Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. Welcome to the first in our series of interviews with Dr. Michael Snyder of Stanford University. In this video, Dr. Snyder will discuss with us how we can manage our health through big data. He uses his personal experience as a sample of what we can learn through monitoring our physiological markers. First, let me introduce Dr. Snyder. Dr. Snyder is the Stanford W. Asherman Professor and Chair for the Department of Genetics and the Director for the Center of Genomics and Personalized Medicine at Stanford University. He is a leader in the field of functional genomics and proteomics. He has pioneered the use of different state-of-the-art omics technology as well as wearable devices for managing human health. His lab also built the first proteome chip for any organism and the first high-resolution tiling array for the entire human genome. if you could introduce some of the work that you're doing at your, your lab. Well, we're very keen on trying to bring advanced technologies, new big data technologies, if you will, into what we call precision health. Mm -hmm. So I'll argue that medicine these days is entirely broken. We're mm -hmm. very focused on fixing people when they're ill. We rarely do anything to focus on keeping people healthy. Uh, and what I mean by that is when people are healthy, they really don't get measured very often. They usually go to a doctor only when they're sick. And so we're trying to change this paradigm by following what it means to be healthy, uh, use very advanced big data technology, so sequencing people's DNA, make as many measurements as possible on them, and follow them over time to see what their personal trajectories look like. And we think this kind of information can be very, very valuable for basically keep them people healthy. And as you're following people, you might find that they'll shift from that, what we call health state and get ill. And we can capture that at its various earliest moments. So bottom line is we can use these advanced technologies again to try and understand health, how it differs from one person to the next, how does it change over time and catch disease at its very earliest time before people are symptomatic, which is by far the best time to intervene. Right. And so I believe you did, you've been following yourself very closely for a number of years, like seven, eight years. And there were some examples of where you, you had, you caught yourself early, you found these. So, so could you talk about uh, that and, and particularly, you know, how you caught these diseases and what sure. you saw? So what we did was this project started about 10 and a half years ago now with me, as you point out. And the idea, I was really just a test example to get the technologies going, see what, how well they would work, how to use them. And so we started on me. We started by sequencing my DNA and use that to predict diseases I might be at risk for, uh, one of which was, in fact, type 2 diabetes. We also would be drawing blood and, and you know, so urine and poop uh, from me longitudinally to see how these profiles would change. And... Um, Basically, as I say, it started some time ago, we started pulling these things. And I had little kids back then. I would get sick quite a bit so we could see what would happen when I got a common cold, things like that. And then uh, the first thing we discovered was that my DNA predicted I was at risk for type 2 diabetes, which was a surprise. It predicted other things as well that I kind of knew about already. Mm -hmm. But the one area that it predicted was that I might be at risk for type 2 diabetes, and uh, once you know it, as we were doing all these measurements on me, it turns out I got ill with type 2 diabetes, in fact. Uh, and it came after a very nasty viral infection. And, and the interpretation now is that um, this viral infection is probably what triggered it. I was genetically at risk, and this viral infection triggered it. And in fact, I had to totally change my lifestyle. Uh, I they had... I had been biking, but I doubled my biking, started running, completely cut out all sugars and all that sort of thing. And I did bring my, my sugar levels back to normal. So I was able to get my diabetes at least initially under control. And uh, that was good for several years, although it, it did come back later. In fact, it was so boringly low, I stopped looking at my, my values, if you will. And then ironically, it, it, it did, uh, why um, I was still collecting data, but I wasn't watching it, um, and, and wouldn't you know it, it spiked up again, right around the time I stopped running, in fact. And it's like back, I went back in diabetic range and got really quite high. There's a, something called a hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of your glucose levels. 
And you're diabetic when you hit the 6.5 number, and I was 7.1. And so I was very surprised to see I was back to diabetic again. And so I started running. I brought it down, never got it all the way down. Uh, and then actually, um, um, basically, um, it gradually crept up. So I've been following me for over 10 years now. Uh, taken over 300 samples, lots and lots of measurements. Again, mostly when I'm healthy, but at times when I get ill. And we gradually was watching my sugar and my the hemoglobin A1C go up uh, slowly. And I've been running about as much as I could, four days a week, four to five miles a day. Uh, it's kind of as much as my schedule could spare. And so I said, all right, it's, uh, it's still going up. I need to try something else. So you can't tell, but I shifted the weightlifting. And that actually... <laughs> Um, it kept, uh, I, I thought that th there's some uh, data out there that suggests muscle mass is better for glucose homeostasis, glucose control. And so, in fact, I um, shifted from running to weightlifting and I did gain 10 pounds of muscle mass. I did whole body MRI. I could see all this happening. And what I did was I um, uh, uh, found out, turns out didn't work. I just kept drifting up to the point where I became diabetic again. So finally, uh, right around the time I was right at the threshold of what's called pre-diabetes and diabetes, I um, tried taking metformin, which mm -hmm. is the frontline drug you would use for type 2 diabetes. Very, very common drug. It's been suggested to be a good anti-aging drug. And it turns out uh, that didn't work either. I'm one of the rare non-responders. So in fact, my glucose just kept going, going up and up. So um, the net result was what finally saved the day was um, I was, you know, I kind of ran out of lifestyle changes and using the frontline drug. And around the same time, because they measure me a lot, we discovered that I actually, my, my, I make insulin just fine and my cells, which is what controls your glucose and my cells respond to insulin. So the question is what was wrong with me? And as we were making all these measurements, we discovered that I actually make insulin, but I don't release it from the pancreas, which is not uh, not common, but not completely rare either. It does happen. And so we discovered that, and there's a certain drug for that. So mm -hmm. I actually took that drug, and that works like a charm. So that actually drove my glucose way down. So the point out of all this is that my, my, by taking all these big data measurements, I, A, predicted my risk for type 2 diabetes, caught it early, initially got it under control. By doing further measurements, I was able to figure out uh, – you know exactly what was wrong and really take the right drug that was best for me. So we call this precision diabetes. By understanding what's wrong with you, you can really better manage your health. And also by doing these, this big data and longitudinal profiling, we could you know better see what was going on and seeing how I was progressing through time. So, so we think that these technologies are gonna be super powerful, this idea about using lots of data so going back to my original premise, uh, these days when you go to a doctor, they typically measure very few things, and I'll argue some of those things are worthless. Whereas there's some, there's really advanced technologies out there that can be used much, much better to manage your health. And so I told you about genomics being one, the, these deep molecular profiles, we measure all these molecules. There's another technology that we think is super powerful, which is the wearables. Hmm. And so about seven years ago, we brought those on. And I'll, I'll back up and say that, um, yeah, no, not sure how you want to integrate this into your story, but um, we, in addition to me, after a few years, we then enrolled other people. We have a group of about 109 people we've been following for seven and a half years now. So quite a while, which is uh, turning into a very, very interesting study. And we do everything to them we do to me. We sample them while they're healthy. If they do get ill, we'll take more samples to see what's going on. And what we've discovered by profiling this group of um, 109 people, what we discovered is that even in the first little over three years of study, 53 people, 53 times, sorry, uh, I said that wrong. What we discovered is 47 times, we found something very, very important for people's health, like we call it someone with early lymphoma, mm -hmm. two people with pre-cancers that can turn into cancer, we call it two people with serious heart issues, other people with plaques in their arteries. So these different technologies that we were using, very, very advanced technologies, no one of them told us everything that was going on, but the combination was very, very powerful so that we could catch 
all these diseases, in many cases, very, very early before they were symptomatic, but in fact, in all cases, and they can be used to better manage people's health. One person from their genome was predicted to have uh, be at high risk for a heart problem. Um, it turns out a cardiomyopathy. And it turns out they did, we did a follow-up on a young guy and, and we looked at him and sure enough, he does have a heart problem. He's on drugs now. And that never would have been discovered had we not sequenced his DNA. So, so one quick, thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Keeping track of your own data is a great way to manage your own health. A key part of keeping yourself healthy is knowing your personal baseline measurements so that you can tell when they are different and react quickly to the change. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.